What's up you guys? I'm finally back from my amazing time with my family. My husband, my mom, my sister, her fiance and her baby and I went on a trip for my birthday. And when I got back, I had this amazing wheel and I just wanted to show you some of the pieces that I have been making while not working. I feel so guilty because I have so much work to do, but I couldn't wait because I love wheel thrown ceramics. So let me show you a couple things that I made. How cute is this little vase? That's one of them. And then I made some larger vases with some designs and some bowls. And so I'm gonna show you how I made a couple of these um, in this really quick time-lapse video. Thank you guys so much for your patience on shipping orders while I was out of the country. And thank you so much for your patience while I haven't been live because I super miss you guys, but you know, sometimes you have to take a break from everything and streaming service isn't so great in the middle of the ocean. But anyways, let me know what you think about my ceramics and um, I'll be back live tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central. So I don't know if you guys know this about me, but one of my degrees in college was in studio art. That was a concentration in wheel thrown ceramics. Please don't judge what I'm about to throw in front of you guys um, too harshly. I haven't played on the wheel in quite some time. Unfortunately, um, in Dallas, there aren't that many places that will let you just come play on the wheel without teaching. I mean, taking some kind of like wild class that... I probably need actually after rewatching some of my this. <clears throat> I also have a bit of a cold, but um, we're gonna roll. We're gonna roll through it, you know. So if you've never done any pottery on the wheel, it is so relaxing, so amazing. Um, essentially, you're just trying to keep centrifugal force from defeating you. And so while I'm just kind of reteaching myself, I'm doing like smaller bowls and cups and vases and things um, like that. But I, I'm trying to just kind of reteach myself as I go. When I, It's hard for me to remember for some reason how I went about doing this and didn't make the most wonky pieces. But it's working out so far. I made this little bowl. I forgot to trim the foot of it, uh, which is the base, but I'll have to deal with that later. Uh, this process is called coning. Uh, it's where you work your clay up and down in kind of phallic -y, if you will, kind of um, fashion. You cone it up and back down in order to get all the particles of the clay kind of flowing in the right direction. This um, makes it less wobbly. It also will work out any air pockets that you may have in there. I don't wedge my clay because I, I end up working more air into it than working the air out of it. So I have to cone sometimes. And a lot of times that makes your clay softer because the sponge has water on it to make your hands not stick to the clay. And so for me, it's, it's a bit of a balancing act between how many times I do the cone and like how many times I want to versus how many times I can before the clay getting too soft because every time you put water in it you're introducing more softness into your clay which this clay was kind of on the stiffer side when I first started with it so I have a little bit more um, forgiveness in that respect and so it works out but then this process is called bringing up the walls. I'm essentially just moving a lump of clay from the bottom of the piece up to the top of the piece. And sometimes you can just deposit it by um, how your grip is. You can deposit it in different area of the wall on your way up. And um, that's usually because um, an area is kind of thinner. You can feel it between your fingers. So I finished the foot on this one. That's what you're supposed to do. Anyways, so you can deposit the clay in different areas of your uh, cylinder when you kind of bring that bit of clay up the wall. You just kind of loosen your grip wherever you want it to, to be deposited. I hope that makes sense. I'm a little bit on day quill right now. 
So this is a new piece. I'm just coning it. And one of the, I think the reason why Jeff ended up getting me this wheel was because I was searching for like little tea tiny micro tabletop wheels because I never thought I'd be able to afford a real one. Like, you know, this is kind of almost a real, it's a real one, but it's like smaller size. But I was looking to try to do some mini vases. I thought, how hard can it be? Y'all turns out super hard. And so I'm, this process is called throwing off the hump. The whole lump of clay is not getting used. I'm using kind of that base part to get the part that I'm working on like closer to my face. And so I am quote throwing off the hump and using this little paintbrush to help me to put some pizzazzamitaz in the shape and some a lot of the shape that is going to come from um the final process when I go to trim it. But isn't that the cutest little thing? Sadly, it it ends up dying. Womp. And then I fix it. And then later when I try to trim it, I end up dying. Nope. It ends up dying again. So RIP this cute little vase. But um, I'll be doing some more of those cute little things. And so typically at this point, you, um, you can pull a cone up again and throw off of another hump. But I, I think at this point in the night, it was like 11 p.m. So I was like, let's just make a wide mouth bowl. And since I coned it so many times and added so much water to it, it's very soft clay at this point. It is also a bit wonky. You can see the top rim. There's a little bit of a wave, which is not good. And on this one, I think it kind of collapses on me, which on a smaller piece, not a big deal. I should have left it right there. Should have just been done with it. Womp. There it goes. So I was like, what am I going to do with this? And then I decided I was going to make it into an ashtray for my mom. Don't smoke, kids, but if you do, here's how to make an ashtray out of a failed bowl. Ta-da! Ashtray! You guys, I made my mom an ashtray when I was like two? No. Four? I don't know. Whatever age it is that kids make their mom's ashtrays when you're in grade school. And now I'm making her another one. Anyways, so now my clay is beyond leather hard, which is the ideal... Um, uh, dryness, wetness of your clay in order to trim it the easiest. I didn't cover my pieces enough and I got busy working, sending out orders today. So trimming it was a little bit, um, not as fun as it usually is because it was a little bit too dry. So I'm going to be adding some water to it as I trim it when it gets too dry. When it's too dry, um, you risk kind of cracking into the vase or bowl or whatever it is you're turning. And you can also, um, well, you can create chatter. And chatter is when the trimming tool that I'm using kind of skips along the vase or bowl in this instance. Um, and it creates kind of a skipping look, which is usually really neat. A lot of times I add texture into my pieces merely for the glaze to catch in. Because if you use something like a rutile, uh, it looks really interesting. But um, this is the trimming process. I'm making a foot in this moment. A foot is a base of your, in this case, bowl. And for a functional piece, you don't want it to be too um, thin. And you don't want it to be too thick. Because too thick, it's too clumpy. And if it has too much water in it when you fire it, it can explode in the kiln. And if it's too thin... Um, it's just not going to be a very functional piece for too long, especially if it's in my house because <clears throat> uh, my sink is where wine glasses and other delicate things go to die. Um, and with this little card, I'm just burnishing the piece. And that's essentially just smoothing out the particles because when you trim it, it kind of sometimes it's a little bit rough or gritty. And when you burnish it, it kind of just smooths it out. And then I just put my little signature on the top of it. I meant to cut that part out, but I didn't. And now I'm using a sponge to uh, soften the edge from where I had it stuck to the bat. The bat is essentially where you throw your pieces. And so right now I'm trying to center it. I'm using a little needle to kind of scrape the edges to see what part is sticking too far out. And then I'll push in towards the center 
in order to center it because that would make sense with words. So now I'm starting the process all over again. I'm trimming out the edge. And with this trimming tool, you can do a lot of different things. Um, I was, when I'm on the sides like this, I'm just trying to make the edges more cohesive because sometimes when you pick up the piece and move it to wherever you're going to dry it at, it tends to um, get fingerprints or if you have to cover it with a, like a shopping plastic bag. Um, so it'll take on that texture. And so I am just smoothing that out. And on the base of this one, I kind of, it has a shallow bottom to it. And so I'm really being careful not to go all the way through where the foot is through the piece. Cause I have definitely done that before. Ooh, on that one, you can see the chatter. See right under, okay. If you rewind it, there's chatter. Um, and this is how the pieces turned out that I threw uh, yesterday and trim today. I made this one into a little bit of a square. This one has the chatter on the bottom of it. If you go back and pause it, you'll see kind of a, a ripply pattern. These on the tan are carved in, but on the round piece on the far left, there's chatter. Also, this is my tea tiny itty bitty adorable baby niece um, on picture day on our trip. And she is almost a big two and she loves Christmas and dancing and spinning and telling you what the lion goes and it goes Wah! and she's the cutest thing I love her so much I can't wait to see her again she's she's my little button nose and she's so precious I'll add, I'll add a photo <laughs> Isn't that so precious? She goes, Wah. Anyways, I miss her. And my sister, of course, and my mom. And also Ben. But um, that was her first time at the beach, first time in big girl water. And I just had the best time. So thank you guys for your patience. Thank you for watching. And thank you so much for your support. It means more to me than I can even put into words. It's, it almost is emotional. It's very emotional for me. So, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember that we do the test so you don't have to. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. We said bye.